And so, Father, we thank you that we're able to be here in your presence. And as we come now to worship the King of Kings, we know that you will be here with us. And we pray that we may experience the power and the love of the King of Kings here now. Let's stand and let's worship. Take a seat. It's great to uh, welcome you here. I want to welcome you whether this is your first time in our building ever or your first time in our building for a little while um, or whether you're joining us online this morning. Again, uh, sorry that we're a little bit late starting. Technology is wonderful when it works, isn't it? And uh, slightly frustrating when it doesn't. But uh, thank you uh, to the incredible guys at the back for getting it all sorted for us. It is great to welcome you. My name is Eleanor Jeans. I'm the associate vicar here. Uh, later on in our service, Rob, our vicar and mission leader, will be speaking to us as we continue our series looking through uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. As we think about being a community of disciples on an adventure together of becoming more like Jesus and helping others do the same. And today we have this beautiful prayer in Ephesians to look at. Uh, later on, our children will be going out into their groups, and as always, I need to read this. So if you're, in, um, if you're age three to year one, you're going into room five. If you're year two to year four, you're going into room four. If you're in year five to year seven, you're going to room six. And there is also an unpersoned crash in uh, room three. Don't worry if you can't remember that, it's all okay, because it's all marked on the doors and someone will show you the right room if you're not sure. Um, I don't really have any notices today apart from to say that we have some bands of marriage to publish. So I published the bands of marriage between Paul John Busby of this parish and Charlotte Trudy Salabanks also of this parish. This is the second time of asking. And if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. 
excellent. Let's pray for them and for ourselves as we begin today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Paul, we thank you for Charlotte and for their love for one another. And we ask that you would bless them as they prepare for their wedding day and their life together. And as we gather together in this place and online, we thank you that you are with us. And as we meet together, Lord, may we meet with you afresh. May we build one another up, encourage one another, and leave knowing you more and being more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, just a word about today, because today is, let me get this right, All Hallows' Eve. Now, hallow is a word that we use quite a lot when we say the Lord's Prayer. We say, hallowed be your name. And so, hallow means holy. So, today is a holy day. It's the day before All Saints' Day, which, of course, is the day that we remember and honor people who have lived for God. Now, of course, Halloween, as this day has become known, um, has become a day which celebrates the scary, it celebrates the darkness. But I want to encourage us today to remember that today, Jesus is light. In the darkness, the light shines, and the light, the darkness will never extinguish it. Jesus is the light of the world. He has defeated darkness. And because we know Jesus, we can do what Ephesians 5, 8, which we'll be looking at in a few weeks, says. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. So it might be a dark, dreary, windy, cold, wet day, but Jesus is the light of the world. And of course, course, the problem is that we sometimes, we're more drawn to things in the darkness that are not the light. But what is wonderful is that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can come to him again and again and say sorry, knowing that he has defeated darkness and that his light shines on. So let's just spend a few moments saying sorry to God now. 1 John 1 says, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So let's say sorry. In a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and despairing world, we have failed to share our bread. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So on a day when we are reminded, as I've just said, of the fact that Jesus has won the victory, that he is the light of the world, we're going to remind ourselves that nothing is too big for God. So if you would like to stand, if you're able to join in with this song, I've offered to do some actions. Do please join in. That would be great. Teeny baby for his care Is the God of the big God 
Rob's got to work out how to get his mask off from his microphone first. One of the, um, just to keep you on your toes, Matt, the sound's going to go all over the shop. <laughs> it's like one of the electric things, you can go without it buzzing. Yay! <laughs> no, I wasn't quite, that wasn't worthy of a round of applause, believe you me. <laughs> if that's worthy of a round of applause, you're very easily pleased, which is, good, <laughs> which is a good sign for later on. Um, yeah, I'm Rob, I'm the vicar here. It's lovely to welcome you. One of the great things about being involved in the band is you get to see you all. And when it's action songs, it's great. I feel like I should award a points for who does the best actions. Um, I've got a light here. I'm just wondering how I could um, make it work. Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Yes, Layla. God, God, will you make the light work, please? What are you saying, God? Plug it in. Oh, thank you. Yeah, God. Listen to God's advice. Absolutely. So, plug it in and ooh, look at that. can go nice and warm. Oh, cool again. I see again. So what's going to happen? Let's make it nice and bright, shall we? What's going to happen if I unplug it? Oh. <laughs> Still working. The great thing about this light is it works off the electricity. But you know what happens? It charges, gets charged up when it's working on the electricity so that when you unplug it, it can still work. So I can walk around with it. But I can't because that will annoy the camera operators. <laughs> I just realised that. Sorry, Nick. Sorry, all those out in video land. Um, do you think if I carried on, kept this on for ages, it would carry on working? It would run out of charge eventually, wouldn't it? Because it relies on being charged into the power to be able to give it that. And you know, in our lives with Jesus, in our lives with God, it's really important that we spend time getting plugged in, in our, when we come to worship on a Sunday, or when we read the Bible, when we pray to God every day. But the great thing is if we do that, if we kind of get charged up, so to speak, if we can put it that way, it means that we can spend the rest of the day knowing that we still have God's power within us. Knowing that he's still with us, even if we're not actively sitting, kneeling down, praying and talking to him at that moment. We can know his love and his power. And what a lovely example of light, because it says in Philippians 4, it says we can shine 
like stars to a world of darkness. And that's what we can do when we've got that connection with God to feed us through the day and through the week. And what an important day to think about, as Ellen has already reminded us, about shining as light into dark places. Jesus is the light of the world. The light has come into the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. I've just realised the significance of a picture, I believe, that the Lord gave me just before the service, which was actually of a match being put out into water. But then when it came out of the water, it came light again. The darkness cannot put the light out. And friends, I do beg of you, don't get involved in Halloween stuff, because it's a world of darkness, and it's not a safe thing. And we don't know what we're exposing ourselves up to. But remember, we remain connected to God, charged up by him. He is the light of the world. And the darkness can never put the light out. Even though I can just flick a switch. <laughs> Let's carry on in worship. The light of God shining in this place. The love of God reaching down to touch us in this place. And the power of God available to us in this place as well. Let's spend a few moments now as Rob has just been encouraging us. We're totally and completely turning ourselves over to God. To worship him. Inviting him to fill this place and to fill our lives with his love, with his grace, and with his power. Please stand if you're able.
uh, those songs, I had the privilege of being able to look out of the windows. And we were singing about being still in the presence of the Lord as leaves were going sideways outside, as the trees were swaying massively, as there was darkness in the sky. But there was this beautiful moment when the light was shining through um, the, the raindrops on the window. And it was absolutely beautiful. And I'm not quite sure what God was saying to me um, in that image and in that picture. But there is something about being in the presence of God, that whatever is going on outside, whatever is going on around us, we can still know peace. We can still know God's uh, presence and stillness. We're going to continue in that stillness now. In a moment, our children and young people are going to go out into their groups. But before we do that, Rebecca is going to lead us as we pray. So do please uh, take a seat. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for your love for us and thank you for this new day and all the opportunities it brings to show your love for other people. Thank you for the half-term holiday some of us have enjoyed and some of us are still enjoying. Although we always try our best, we are sorry when we say and do things we know we shouldn't. Thank you that you forgive us when we say sorry and please help us to do better in the coming week. Thank you for your world. That you you have given us to enjoy and look after. We are sorry for the damage we are causing and please help us to look after it better. We pray for the COP26 meeting starting today. Please help all the world leaders to agree how to tackle climate change so that the world becomes healthier for everyone to enjoy. We continue to pray for all those affected by COVID-19 and thank Thank you for the frontline workers who continue to work so hard to keep us safe. Please help us to play our part in keeping the infection rate down. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Let's pray before our children leave us into their groups. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts you give us. We thank you for our children and young people. We thank you for their leaders. And we ask, Lord, as they go into their groups now, that they would meet with you and learn more of who you are. And for those of us remaining in this room as well, that we would meet with you and know more of who you are as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Children and leaders, it's time for you to go and find your room and um, have fun this morning. Off you go. worship area is half emptied um, and isn't it great to see all those children going out into their groups it's wonderful Um, we're going to have our reading now and the person who is doing our reading this morning is also out with the groups so she's filmed it for us so uh, we'll now have our reading this morning this reading is from this reading is from Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 21 A a prayer for the Ephesians For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love surpasses all knowledge, and that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. 
Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is in work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father God, thank you for your word available to us. Thank you for your power at work within us and available to us. I pray that we would know uh, something of your uh, power within us this evening. We would know a fresh connection as we unpack your word. And we would know your spirit working within us, both breaking chains and building us up. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We've used the word power a few times already this evening, and power is uh, one of those words that can get used in so many different ways and mean so many different things to different people. There's the power of the tech that makes uh, these things happen, all the, the amazing sound guys and the, uh, the guys doing the visuals and stuff at the back. Uh, I should just say on that note, by the way, um, that we are recording this. We don't normally, but we had a problem with the power or with the system uh, this morning. Um, so this sermon is going to be dropped into uh, this morning's service. So if you're watching it online, folks, uh, the edited version, you can see if you can spot the discontinuity in lighting. I mean, we're in the same, but uh, there might be a slight discontinuity in terms of the lighting. Uh, but it does mean if you're at the front, you might just, your back of your heads might get seen. Um, so I hope you combed your hair. But power is, uh, that's one example of power. But of course, there's lots of different examples of power. And power's been in the headlines a lot uh, recently, hasn't it? We have the wholesale gas prices going up, uh, which is going to be a struggle uh, for many in terms of the bills in our pockets uh, very soon. It's only a couple of weeks, it seems, since we had the petrol shortages, and we were all worrying whether we are going to have uh, enough to power our vehicles to get around. We've experienced some pretty fierce power of the wind today, haven't we? Uh, the gazebo in our garden has ripped, um, but looking at some of the stuff on the Ice Lodge Facebook page, I think we got off lightly uh, in terms of some of the damage that's actually happened to houses around. Inga's mentioned COP26, all about power and how we can use power sustainably as a human race. Just yesterday, JCB signed a contract for vast amounts of green uh, hydrogen. No, I don't know what green hydrogen is, but it sounds like it's good uh, in terms of power. But power can also be misused and abused. And sometimes we think about that when we think of the word power, don't we? It reminds me of the old story of uh, the man who, who's just been promoted uh, and in his company he's got an office for the first time. He's been in an open plan office up to then. And he's really enjoying the, the sense of power and status that he thinks he's got as a result of it. And uh, he decides to show off a bit. There's a knock on the door and he decides to do the old, uh, I'm going to make him wait and show how important I am. And so uh, he picks up the phone and says, come on in, but then talks uh, as if he's in a really important conversation. Uh, settling some deal and, and really going into the details of it and showing how important it is and making this guy wait and wait and wait. Eventually, after uh, his triumphant phone call, he puts the phone down and then says, yep, what can I do for you? He says, I'm the phone engineer. I've come to put your line in. He thought he had power. It was actually the other one who really had power. The word that we get... <coughs> The word that gets used in the New Testament uh, most of the time, when we uh, the word that we translate as power is the word, as some of you will know, the word dunamis, from which we get the word, our word, dynamite. It is something ultimately destructive. Sometimes we think of power as being destructive. I learned something new today, actually, uh, a, few weeks, uh, a few days ago. Uh, a new um, mnemonic, so I'm sure it's not a new mnemonic, I hadn't come across it for guitar strings, I'm looking across the musicians here, um, to know the guitar strings are being E-A-D-G-B-E, um, uh, which apparently is um, Eddie 8 Dynamite 
goodbye Eddie, um, which is what would happen if Eddie ate uh, dynamite. Uh, we did have an Eddie in the congregation this morning. I don't think there's one here this evening, thankfully. Maybe we have to say goodbye to him. But the power talked about here in this passage is neither dis- it's not destructive, it's not macho, it's not flashy, it's not self-serving. But there are three references to power in just these uh, small number of verses. Verse 16 talks about power to be strengthened in our inner being. Verse 18 talks about power to understand, power to comprehend, power to grasp. And then verse 20 talks about the power to act. And I'm going to return to each of those in a minute. But first of all, we need to think about the source of power. And Paul's very clear about what the source of power is. In fact, going back into the passage we looked at last week, uh, verse 7, we read... um, I'm looking, at verse, I'm looking at chapter 2, verse 7. No wonder it doesn't make sense. Um, I became a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Paul is very aware of God's power coming to him through his grace. And so the very beginning of this passage, where does the power come from? He kneels in prayer before the Father, verse 14. The power comes through God's spirit, verse 16, with Christ dwelling in our hearts, verse 17, with the result that we're filled to the fullness of God, verse 19, Father, Spirit, Son. The power comes out of connectedness to God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, the triune God. Connectedness, not just occasional passing acquaintance, not just coming to him when we're in desperate need, but 24-7, 3, 6, 5. Well, that doesn't mean you've got to be in a prayer meeting all the time, but actually living a lives that are connected to him so that our prayer life, in effect, we are in a prayer meeting all the time because at any moment we can have direct access to the Father. Did you know James, the author of the, the later letter in the New Testament, was known to his friends as camel knees. There's camel knees because his knees were so calloused by spending so much time in prayer. And of course there's no magic about the posture that we have, but there is something about expressing humility and dependence. We submit to God rather than trying to boss God. Prayer and worship are the engine room of the church. Just over this weekend, churches together in Kettering, we've had 36 hours of continuous prayer. A plug for our monthly prayer meeting, the hub, tomorrow night uh, in this building, the engine room, the life source of the church. Because if our Christian life is about following Jesus, and I hope that you think it is, then we need to hang out with him. We need to get to know him and always be getting to know him better. We can't reach that point where, well, I think, I've, I think I know about it now. I think I've got it sussed. I think I know enough about Jesus now. That's not a way to carry out a relationship. If uh, Those of you who are married, if the only time you spent with your spouse was one hour a week, maybe an hour and a half a week, that's all the time you spent with them and you were surrounded by 50, 100 other people in the room at that time, that wouldn't do much for developing the relationship. Yet some people seem to think that they can develop their relationship with Jesus by being in a church building in a worship service for one hour a week with 100 other people. It doesn't work like that. And yes, prayer isn't always easy. Some of us find it hard. And we shouldn't be surprised, actually, because we're in a spiritual battle. There are forces, dark forces, that want to stop us developing that relationship. I um, was conducting an interview uh, with uh, Ben Lindsay for a thing that was going online um, for New Wine a couple of weeks ago. Um, Some of you might have read his book, We Need to Talk About Race, um, which is a great uh, unpacking of the whole issue of racial injustice in this nation, indeed around the world. 
But uh, Ben is aware of, he's also campaigning against uh, teenage uh, knife crime and what an epidemic that is in certain sectors of our society. And he was kind of feeling helpless. Um, he, he says, like, it feels like you're fighting power. He said, how do you fight power? You need power. You need God's power. You need his power. You need the Holy Spirit's power to fight. And he called his organization that he set up to do this, Power the Fight. Powerthefight.org.uk, I think it is. When we're fighting power, we need God's power within us to strengthen us. So, unsurprisingly, the source of power comes from God, our Father, through his Spirit, made possible to us by his Son. But what about these three types of power that get mentioned? The first one is, verse 16, power to be strengthened in our inner being. Yeah, I think that is a young Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, you see, quite a lot of people like trying to be strengthened in their outer being in terms of building up the muscles. And I'm not looking at anyone in particular at this moment. Um, and going to the gym, etc. And that's great. That's really good. Maybe at this moment you're thinking, yeah, I have got that gym membership, haven't I? Maybe I should use it. Um, but actually we're talking here about strengthening in our inner being, which isn't visible. I talked about the wind earlier. You know, the wind isn't actually visible. Its effect is very visible. But the wind itself isn't. And actually, even those who are strengthening themselves in their outer being, what's the most important part of yourself to strengthen? It's the core. At the heart of who we are. And likewise, getting the core sorted spiritually, being strengthened in our inner being, is what God's power is available to do. As I said, it's, it's not visible. No one sees it, but it's the power to do things like resist that temptation that you're always prone to fall to. The power to make the right choice when it's the difficult choice. The power to, as Paul puts it, to be content in any and every situation. The power not to be tossed about by different circumstances. The power to know a peace that passes understanding. In short, the power to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The power to be the people we were designed to be. That makes a difference if we know that power. To be strengthened in our inner being. And as we pray later on in this service... It's a great prayer to pray. Lord, strengthen me in my inner being. The second power that Paul talks about here is in verse 18. The power to comprehend, the power to understand. I could do with a volunteer at this moment. Uh, is there someone foolish enough, I mean uh, willing enough, uh, just to come and help me a second? Oh, thank you, Graham. Not only on Gideon's side, in Gideon 1, but you're willing to help. Um, I have a simple task for you. Um, see that? Um, I'd like you to put it in here, please. And I'll carry on talking, okay? I've often said, if we truly... Und oh, he's too good at it. Oh, look at that. Isn't he a star? He is Gideon, absolutely. How many of you thought he wouldn't get that in? <laughs> because it is so big, it looks far too big to go in there, doesn't it? And believe you me, that's the screen that I've used on a few occasions when I've, as backdrop when I've recorded sermons in the study. There's times when it's taken me a lot longer than that. Thank you very much. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> See, Graham's got the power. 
the power to grasp the full extent. Because understanding God's love actually seems too big. That screen seemed far too big to go in that bag. And actually it needed a very special technique, which Graham has, to actually get it in there. But if we truly understood something of the extent of God's love, it would transform us. I, I, I think nothing would be too much or too hard in return if we kind of really grasped what he'd done for us. I think we only get, we only get a sliver of it, I think, really. Paul wants us to try and get our head around it. You know, this how wide, how long, how high, how deep. It's big. God's extravagant love lavished upon us for us to revel in. God's love is too big for our understanding. And I think there's a danger that maybe we shrink God's love to our understanding. Because we can't stretch our understanding to fit God's love. And even Paul is... He's got a reputation as being quite a good thinker, uh, a reasoner, and he says in verse 19, it's beyond knowing. It's a mystery. And it wouldn't be great just to grasp a little bit more of who God is. Because when we have something of understanding, something of the comprehension, it it unlocks another important aspect of, of God's power, and that is love. Some of you know the story of Simon the Sorcerer in um, Acts 8. You see, he sees Peter and John doing some really cool stuff in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he wants to buy a bit of that. He says, what, how much, how much, you know, let me give you some money so I can have some of that power. He doesn't realize that it comes through love. That it comes through compassion. We see in the Gospels, when Jesus uh, performs so many of his miracles, we see He's moved to compassion. And the word that gets used there, it, it talks about real, almost like it's, it's tearing your gut. You feel it in your gut at a visceral level. Jesus doesn't just bring healing and, and deliverance for people because he thinks, well, that's my job. I've got the power. It comes out of being moved deep within. See, when we have the power, just a little bit more power to comprehend God's love, then love will well up within. Love is a powerful force if God is behind it. Because that gives us the third thing, and this comes in verse 20, the power to act for him. Because to be moved with compassion but unable to do anything is really painful, isn't it? We've all been in that situation. When we feel, I must be able to do something, and we feel powerless. But verse 20 is wonderful. It's a verse we love to bring out. God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ever ask or imagine. Whoa! Isn't that great? That's the first part of the verse. We don't often read the second part of the verse. Do you know what the second part of the verse says? It says, according to his power at work in us. God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ever think or imagine according to his power at work in us. I've quoted John 14, 12 so many times to you. Jesus says, it's good that I go away because the Holy Spirit is coming. You're going to do the works that I've done. You're going to do even greater works than I've done. Because his power is at work in us. The apostles carried on Jesus' ministry because they had the power of the Holy Spirit in them. That's why it was so important for them to wait for the power to fall. That's why it's important for us to wait, to spend time just waiting on God. So that as it says in verse 19, we can be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Because yes, the Holy Spirit that was available to those early apostles is available to us today. And God's way of working is so often he wants to work with us. He wants us to act as his agents rather than him doing it himself. So this power, I've talked about being the power earlier to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. This is the power, this is the power to exhibit the gifts of the Spirit. 
just to act for him. There's so many things we can do to act for him. Some of them are amazing, and you know, I, I pray that even tonight we'll see God do extraordinary things. Some of them are very simple things. One little thing you could do that you could have the power to act for him this evening is if you're on Facebook, when you go home, look at the, um, go to the Christ the King Kettering um, page and see the uh, notice about Alpha and hit share. It could go to hundreds. There's, 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 I don't know, 50, 60 of us here. We've all got quite a lot of friends and a lot of them are different friends. Just how many, how many people in Kettering would receive that? Yeah, every time we put a post, we get about six people sharing it. That's a pretty simple thing. You don't need a lot of power to do that. You need the power of the internet. But that's just one tiny little example. Because my wife told me to say it when I came out. Because she was just doing the post for Facebook as I left. But the main thing is, let's think of ourselves not as people who come to church. Let's not even just think of ourselves as Christian or a follower of Jesus. They're all great things. <laughs> think of ourselves as apprentices of Jesus. Looking to him. Learning to live like him. Because we have the power to act for him. Remembering that the power to act for him, that's number three in Paul's list, comes out of first... That power to be strengthened in our inner being. Secondly, the power to understand more of who he is. We don't just get to do whizzy stuff. We need to be transformed. And go on being transformed. And go on being transformed. Because I don't know about you, I've got a long way to go yet. So let's get on our knees, whether that's literally or metaphorically, to know the source of this power that Paul talks about. And let's know that power to be strengthened within whatever it is you face today. And let's ask for power to understand a little bit more of God's love for us. And let's ask for power to act for him. Be it simply to speak to someone about who Jesus is. Or be it to dare to pray for someone. To go out on a limb for Jesus. Surely that's worth living for. That's worth going after. As long as we remember all that we do, the glory goes not to ourselves, but the glory goes to him. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Rob. Let's just be uh, quiet for a moment and ask God to um, come by his power, by his spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. We thank you that you are the same spirit at work today. We ask that you would come now by your power that we may be strengthened in our inner beings that we may know power to understand and comprehend and that we may have your power to act for you come Holy Spirit praying before the service um, there was a picture of a match that it was lit but then it was plunged into water and of course the match went out but when the match came out of the water it relit you may feel like everything has gone wrong 
that the light that was lit in you, your love for Jesus, maybe has been distinguished in, in, in some way, extinguished even um, in some way. It can be really tough, but God has you. He won't let you down. And the beauty is that all we need to do is to come to him afresh and say, come, Holy Spirit, light that fire again. started to uh, pray. I don't know if you noticed an emergency services vehicle, a siren went. And I just had that sense of, um, as we think about being strengthened, as we think about that picture of the match going out, that as someone who feels at this moment it's, it's crisis time, that what you need at the moment are the emergency services. Well, I think it's, is it the AA claim that the fourth emergency service or I don't want to call God the fifth emergency service. I want to call him the first. But I just encourage you today to grab hold of him. You might want to ask, you might want to ask someone else to pray with you as well. But to grab hold of him in that emergency. To take hold of his strong hand to lift you out of wherever you are. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he is faithful. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are at work today. We thank you for the power that we can find in you. ask the Lord that you would be at work in each one of us today that you would strengthen our inner being and as we go from this place later and we continue walking with you this week help each one of us to keep that light burning for you that we would know the power to understand something more of your love this week we would know that power at work in us serving you and that in all of that the glory would go to you Lord in Jesus name Rob said, if there is anything particular that uh, God has been uh, saying to you today or just prompting you on or nudging you or giving you a little niggle, um, then we'll be really happy to pray with you after the service. If you're joining us online, do be in contact. Um, my contact details, I think, have been on the screen. Um, you can always email me or one of the uh, team or email the office, and we'd be really happy uh, to meet up with you and pray with you and to uh, work through whatever it is that God might have been uh, prompting you with today. We're going to have um, our final song now. We've been thinking a bit about love this morning, and we're going to remind ourselves of God's vast love. So if you're able, would you stand as we sing together? Loving kindness as the flood when 
want to um, send an apology out to those who are joining us online. Um, apparently, quite a lot of the sermon wasn't online, um, and you, you got the last point. Um, just to say that that will be available later, I presume, but you can always join us tonight at six o'clock for our service uh, this evening, um, should you want to do so. We'd love to see you uh, tonight. Those of us um, in the building are going to remain for a little bit longer, but in a moment we're going to say goodbye to those of you joining us online. Um, So um, it's great to have the children joining us back again. And uh, in a moment, those of us in the building, we're going to have a brief financial update and we'll have an opportunity to share testimonies and stories of how God has been at work um, in the last, uh, well, however long it might be, we can share that. So um, prompt to those of you in the building if you want to share anything later uh, to do so. So I'll finally um, have a prayer and a blessing before we say goodbye to those joining us online. We've been reminded this morning of this verse, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so may God give you and all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.